This video will show you how to weigh and hand feed neonatal kittens using a syringe so that they stay on a healthy weight gain trajectory. It's a good idea to lay out your supplies first thing. Here's what you need starting at the top left and going clockwise. First is your syringe gruel. To syringe feed kittens, you need to blend your gruel finely enough that it can be drawn into a syringe. The wet food to water ratio will depend a little bit on the water content of the canned food, but in general, it's about two parts food to one part water. Right below the syringe gruel are the syringes. We will give you a couple of those when you pick up your kittens. You'll also have wet food on hand to make into ordinary gruel, which is just wet food mixed with a little water and mashed up with a fork. The ratio will be about the same as with the syringe gruel, but it's fine to eyeball it. The reason we add water to our canned food is that kittens haven't always figured out how to drink water at this age, and we want to help them stay hydrated. Your scale needs to be a digital one that weighs in grams. Most digital scales do, but it's important to check. A little towel or a thin blanket is helpful in case the kitten needs to be bibbed or burritoed while you feed them. We'll go over that a little bit later. And finally, our fosters keep meticulous records on their kitten's progress. We use a chart like this, which is easy for our staff to interpret if we need to problem solve. We start every meal by weighing the kitten. This is important because we need to know their start weight in order to calculate their goal weight. But of course, kittens have no idea why we're weighing them and have no motivation to comply. Here you see me struggling to weigh Fiddle Faddle, who would rather not sit in the bowl. Part of the problem here is that the bowl I'm using is really a little bit too small. And here I'll mention that you don't have to use the bowl the scale came with. You can use any old bowl as long as you tear the scale to zero after setting the bowl on it. If you have a fidgety kitten who won't sit still long enough to be weighed, you can block the exits like I'm doing here or try try to distract the kitten by snapping fingers over their head or making other interesting noises. You can also get a taller bowl. Regardless, the key is patience. Once you get the initial weight in grams, be sure to write that weight down, then calculate the goal weight straight away. As you can see in this example, an easy way to do that is to multiply the start weight you just obtained by 1.05. The resulting number is the weight the kitten needs to weigh by the end of the meal. Since the end goal of syringe feeding is a kitten that eats on their own, we always want to give the kitten a chance to eat their meal by themselves. Even if they don't eat the whole thing themselves, they're still getting good practice. We often use plates for gruel instead of bowls at the beginning because kittens don't have great depth perception initially. After a while though, they figure it out. If your kitten is easily distracted and wanders off after a few bites, sometimes it may help to return them to their food. Other times you may just have a syringe gruel kitten on your hands. Once your kitten has eaten as much as they want to by themselves, you can reweigh them. If they've reached their goal weight for the meal, great, they're done. If they're still short by some grams, then it's time to switch to the syringe. So here's how to syringe feed a kitten. The syringe goes in your dominant hand and your off hand wrangles your kitten. It's fine to manually control the kitten's head a little bit, for example, by putting a thumb and forefinger on each of their temples. The important thing there is not to constrict the throat. My fingers here are very, very loose. The syringe goes in the side of the mouth rather than the front and is angled a bit rather than aiming straight down the gullet. This is to help prevent aspiration if your thumb slips and squirts a little too much in your kitten's mouth. Depress the plunger gently, giving the kitten ample time to swallow. If you flood the kitten's mouth and food falls back out, just go a little slower. There are a couple of things you can do if you have a wiggly kitten. First up is the bib, which is just what it sounds like. Your thin towel or small blanket goes gently around the kitten's neck and past their feet. This is sometimes helpful if you have a kitten that is a little too busy with their feet, as it can kind of take those front feet out of play. Another option for wiggly kittens is the Pareto. This works the best on younger syringe gruelies. The older ones sometimes get a little offended if you Pareto them, but sometimes it helps the younger ones focus up a little bit and hold still. From here on, you're just feeding and weighing and feeding and weighing as needed until the kitten reaches their goal weight. In our example from earlier, if Fiddle Faddle started her meal at 500 grams, she's done when she weighs 525 grams. Once she's reached her goal weight, she's done until her next meal time. Finally, remember to leave food out for your kitten in between meals so that they can graze and snack and learn to eat on their own like a big kitty.